Um, so I'm really, really excited to introduce this next speaker. His name is Drew. I don't know if you saw my post, but one of the things that I am most inspired about with Drew is this incredible husband and wife team they have going on. And I think that so many of us are looking for people that we connect with on both a friendship level and a love level where you can feel like, wow, we're really lifting each other up and we're doing together what we were called to do. So Drew is head of security at the United Indigenous Nations camp and I had the pleasure of being connected with his wife as well who's helping with community health and um, so please give a round of applause for Drew. Oh, okay, where do I start? Um, let's see, I, I'm a veteran, well, I'm Western Shoshone, uh, Thunderbird Clan. Um, my resume goes, uh, I'm a 10-year veteran of the Army, two tours in Iraq. And uh, I come back from Iraq with uh, severe PTSD. Um, suicide route, depression, all that, and end up getting into the VA and um, spent about a year and a half at going through the VA healthcare system. And then I realized that I had to find a cure instead of a band aid for my PTSD. So I, I turned to uh, medicine work from South America, which opened up the spirit world to me, and that turned into a trip to Standing Rock and it was supposed to be a six day trip and it turned into two months at Standing Rock and uh, <clears throat> come back to, come back to Florida. I'm, I lived in Cape Coral until I just recently got rid of my house but uh, and jumped in this uh, with both feet, uh, me and my wife Angie who she was talking about and um, got back from Standing Rock and I knew I wanted to go, continue on so went to um, sacred water camp up in Live Oak. I spent a couple days there and I uh, realized I, I wanted an indigenous camp to go to and um, that's when United, well it was uh, Standing Rock Camp Florida at first but then it changed to United Indigenous Nations Camp which uh, is what it is now. been there about two and a half months. Uh, I was the first one to meet with the elders there to request permission to uh, operate in that area. And I was the first one on the ground uh, at the camp, me and a couple other people, and um, still there, still moving forward. Uh, we've done a lot. We've um, been in front of Miami-Dade County Commissioners to um, to talk to them and try to get them to stop um, funding for a bike path that would go through the Everglades, which they voted down humanis uh, unanimous, unanimously in front of us uh, during that time. And that, that was that was a multi-year project uh, by uh, Betty Osceola and the Mississippi people down there. And uh, I was just honored to be there when when they finally took pulled the funding out from under the rug of that of that nasty situation that was going on. Um, we did um, went up to the shareholders meeting at Wells Fargo a couple weeks ago in, up in um, up by Jacksonville. Um, Raise some eyebrows up there, to say the least. Um, my wife got it on, on, on router, how do I print? Reuters. Reuters, yeah, she was uh, pictured in Reuters. Uh, so United Indigenous Nations got some uh, nationwide attention. And uh, we just, right before this, we come from up in Manatee County, um, up in front of the, the um, Manatee County uh, commissioners on another issue of them putting in a big uh, project up there. But um, the list goes on and on, and we're a small camp, but um, we're tenacious, and we go after we go after the money, we go after the root of the problem, and we're also, um, like Jill was saying, you know, we're about in, um, reconnecting people to their indigenous ways, uh, and, you know, because that being human, my brother said the best, being human is, is what needs to be come back. Um, you know, connecting to the land, praying to the land, praying, praying to the sun and the mother, Uchi Makan, you know, that is, that is what you need to pray to. And a lot of these people, you know, 85, 90% of the U.S. and the world prays to, mo prays to money and greed. And that's just that evil, evil energy. It's, it's, it's said over and over, that's an evil energy. And, you know, you pray to love and, and spirit and the creator and, that's, if you believe in that fully, you know, that, that will carry you further than anything. 
So, um, <clears throat> actually, me and my elder Art was talking about it on the way up here. And uh, we was talking about yesterday with Betty from the Mississippi. Um, we was talking about prayer. And, you know, pe people, I want to pray for the water. I want to pray for the earth. I want to pray against violence. Or I want to pray against this or that. And I was sitting there trying to figure out what what is one thing you can pray to that could solve all those things because you're going to be praying for a long time it, like my list got really long of the things i was praying to i was like i gotta cut this down and figure out what one thing i can pray to to solve all this and it just was really simple i was praying that the same consciousness that got opened up to me the same love would be opened up to everyone on the world and if you do that it'll change everything because if there was the whole world was like me and the people of the United Nations and all of you, the world would change overnight, you know, and um, that's that's what my prayer is and that's that's what uh, my, our focus is at United Indigenous Nations, that's, that's what we try to do, um, you know, we fight for the water and we fight for Mother Earth, but ultimately the one prayer is change the consciousness of <clears throat> the rest of the world. I love you all in the coffee outside. Cool. If you guys don't mind, I would love to do a Hawaiian chant to kind of call, you know, all of these indigenous and Polynesian, and I rep the islands, right? Um, so I would love to do this chant to invite that energy in. 